Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I thought I would just do a sort of laid back casual and talk to you about some of the books that I have read. Not really like do a review, just talk to you about the some books that I am currently reading and some books that I want to read in the nearby future. Before I start I wanted to talk about Pride Month. It's obviously Pride Month in the UK. So yeah last year I read books exclusively by LGBTQ plus authors or content about them but this year I just completely forgot um, and not it's not like you can only read it during June but I think it really helps to participate and you know purchase these books so yeah I didn't so I am going to try this um this month to look at through my sort of wish list or my books to read and pick up a couple of books from LGBTQ plus authors as well but they won't be in this video but I did want to recommend one book that I read earlier this year which is Little Gold by Ali Rogers I will link up here the video that I did talking about that book and just put it, the name of the book in the description box down below I will also link my video that I did last year I did two videos last year talking about my read the books that I had read during Pride Month that I really thoroughly enjoyed a lot of them so yes I will link that I thought I would speak about that so yeah let me talk about some books that I have read like I just want to talk about two books um one that I really enjoyed another that I was just a bit meh about so the first one is this which is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams I know I am like many 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 years behind the rest of the population in reading this um but I finally read it so you know I'm finally there um I actually read this because my boyfriend had just like pulled it out of his bookshelf and yeah I read it on I started reading it when I was coming back from London to Scotland and yeah I think I finished it maybe last week or something like that I don't really know when I finished it but I really enjoyed it like it's just a perfect blend of funny and a bit silly but having some really meaningful like impactful moments and lessons in there I really enjoyed like the beginning bit when they were on earth and just hearing from Arthur and Ford I think those are the two characters names and yeah no I just really loved hearing about what was going on in this planet and just meeting all the different new characters I obviously now get a lot of the references that people talk about you know the one where it's like farewell so long and thanks for all the fish that's quoted very wrong and the answer to everything being 42 and just some other little bits in here that I just found really fun but like obviously now I get some cultural references that I clearly didn't get before uh so yeah I can't wait to read the other five books in the trilogy yeah that's the kind of weird and wonderful this book is but no I really enjoyed this and I think I said yeah I gave it four out of five stars because I actually thought it was really funny there were just some bits in there I just thought how bloody clever so another book that I want to speak about is Blood Orange by Harriet Tice. I actually finished this in the span of two days, so I started reading this in the park. Um, finished reading it in the park. We has, have had some really lovely sunny days in Glasgow and I have just been in the park actually just relaxing, like doing nothing else but like having my phone and a book and just lying in the sun, going my phone, not doing anything else. Um, so yeah, I had a really nice time just like drinking iced coffee and reading this. So I gave this two out of five stars. I have a really huge, not, not a huge issue, but I had just had this issue with thrillers and I think perhaps I feel like maybe thrillers and perhaps maybe horror, um, but I don't really know if you say horror, but thrillers particularly suffer from this in the fact that obviously the aim of this genre is really to like thrill the reader and shock them and so I think as an author you really have to deliver like this huge like punch or like slap in the face for the reader and I think because everyone is so different it won't land all the time with everyone and if it doesn't land with you you're more than likely to just be like well that was rubbish um, and I don't think many other genres really suffer from that like of course everything is subjective so however you review things and is where you are in your life and things like that but I think for a lot of other genres people can perhaps see the merit in it or where the author was trying to go whereas with thrillers I think if it just doesn't land for you it doesn't land you're just like what the fuck is this um and I read a couple of thrillers towards like the beginning of January the end of December I had the need for the suspense the build-up all that sort of tension and stuff like that but then I'd get to the review and I'd just be like I can pick about a hundred holes in this and this one I didn't get to and think I could pick about a hundred holes in it <laughs> the issue with this was none of the characters were likable and that is fine you do not have to like all the characters when you're reading a book I don't think that necessarily dictates whether or not you really enjoy a book characters can be absolutely horrible and you can still like it <laughs> however none of the characters were nice in this book and you were just reading this you were like do I care so I'll read you the back because one thing about this book is I saw a couple of people talking about it last year on booktube and things like that 
but I didn't really know what this is about and really the back doesn't even give you much of an indication. So it says here, Alison has it all, a loving family and a career on the rise. She's just been given her first murder case to defend, but all is never as it seemed. And then the front, at the front here, it says here, a damaged marriage, a toxic affair, a dark obsession. The dark obsession where you hear nothing about and really until the end. Um, but yeah, so our main character, Alison, is um, a lawyer, barrister, I can't really remember which one she is I'm like what the difference even is um and yet as you see here in the back she's just been given her first murder case and she her marriage with her husband is like on the rocks they have a little girl the husband seems to be super protective over the daughter and stuff like that and basically like he's always saying to Alison like you can't do anything right you're always getting drunk you can't cook, you can't cook and all these sort of things and you're just like what's this guy's problem and then you know, like the opening chapter is her sort of like getting really drunk she's come back from a case just found that she's landed this murder case goes out for a drink and it's just like i'm just gonna have one drink or two drinks and i'm gonna go home ends up with her getting completely smashed um you meet the guy she's having the affair with and then sort of the next chapter is her husband and her kid coming to her chambers to find her because she got so drunk she went back to her chambers and just passed out and i'm just like excuse me and you know i don't make light of this because Having worked in the corporate world, I know there are a lot of people that would just drink so excessively and just, you know, grown people with families and stuff that just end up in the most, like, precarious situations and you're just like, are you 15? So, to me, that is completely believable, completely happens, but I'm just like, this lack of control is not something I am familiar with, so I'm just a bit like, eh? And so, obviously, like, her husband finds her there and it's just like, yeah, someone's just going out with the husband, no one's nice to each other, everyone's horrible. You're just like, what, what world is this? But it's completely accurate. I believe in the accuracy of it. What got it for me was, I just can't imagine having an affair with someone who treats me worse than my husband and her husband would treat her bad. So I'm just like, how did you get into this affair? Why are you having this affair? Like I, I can't deal. So it was just so weird. The guy she was having an affair with was a dick. Her husband is a dick. She's a dick. The only nice person was a child and we never really got to see her. <laughs> like, you know, and it was just so weird. So many things, like other things happen in the book and you're reading it and you're just like, I literally don't care. Like this book has some really dark hearts in it, like trigger warning for like sexual abuse, suicide, all of it, man. And you're just reading it and you're just like, me not care. Me not care because these characters are really irritating. Um, so yeah and then when the end happened i was a bit like shit like it deals with some really dark traumatic stuff but i was also like oh okay well yeah and it's bad because you shouldn't feel about that, that way when you hear the end and the reveal it should be something that was just like holy crap like this is super dark and i did think oh like this is really dark and you're supposed to like feel sorry for the character but none of that came to me i was just like this is really dark and well this is a thriller so i expect all these things to be really shocking but in the end i was just kind of glad it was over i'm really glad it was over for our main character too but i don't know i didn't feel anything towards her so yeah two out of five and i really find generally that's what happens with thrillers you get to the end and i think if it's not satisfactory for you then you're just a bit like well bad as it was i don't really care but also i think what this book suffered with a lot is the fact that all the characters were so annoying they were unlikable and therefore you're just like hmm, i don't care so yeah let's talk about books that i am currently reading at the moment i think the first one i want to speak about is new daughters of africa edited by margaret busby i don't think i've spoken about this book since i hauled it um last year or maybe earlier this year i don't really know time is not a thing anymore and I have it on my Goodreads. I've not really marked where I am on it in my Goodreads because I started reading it. And I think, I don't think I said this in my book haul, but this is split by like years. So we've got pre-1900s and we've got the 1900s, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s and so forth. And so when you're reading it, you think oh, I'm gonna read it chronologically. Personally, I don't wanna be stuck in the 1900s for too long. So um i was i have now been flicking between loads of different things i especially because i feel like a lot of the pre-1900s at least the one i read were all like americans um not that there's anything wrong with americans but it was just a bit like okay we, we get what the time was and what they're writing about and things like that so yeah i have been flicking through and finding some sort of other short stories and poems in here so i think this is what the majority of this is made up of like short stories poems i think there's some speeches in here because i think sojourner truths speeches in here i would have thought it would have been in the pre-1900s so but no perhaps not um yeah i think it just cont uh, contains a range of different sort of forms of writing basically and 
I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. There are a couple of like authors that I've noted down um, their works and like found them or found other works by them to read for me to read later. I don't know if I've noted down exactly which ones, but in terms of like things that I've noted down that I like, there's a poem, a poem, a short story by someone called Sefi Atta, which is the cocktail party. If I remember correctly, I think that was set in Ghana. There's another one by Nana Ampa Dankwa, which is a, I'm not sure if it's a short story or poem or whatever, but I think she is the one that has a book called like the diary of like a mad black woman or something like that. She has a book about like depression and being black and something like that. And then there's another, um, short story collection I don't know <laughs> short story or whatever called 87 Tangemere Court um I just noted down the pages and not um the author so that's not really helpful to you so yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying this I am going through it in a very sporadic sense I guess or random sense really um but I just like that there are so many sort of names that I recognize in here but also other people that I don't recognize and it really is just like this book is a wealth of information like it's just like a little treasure chest so I'm also currently reading this book this is Selected Poems by Linton Cressy Johnson. He recently won an award or something for something and that is sort of how I came across him. I am trying to read a poetry collection each month. Um, I'm there about, more about there I would say. Um, so uh, he is, yeah, so pioneering poet Linton Quincy Johnson revolutionised literary English with his electrifying fusion of oral verse, Jamaican Creole, radical pollocks and dub rhythms. The major selection covers over three decades and includes classic early poems, yada yada yada. Uh, so I have started this, I actually I think started it before I marked it on my Goodreads, but I am finding it a bit hard to get through just because he, the dialects he like I guess speaks in, the Jamaican Creole, is also how he writes as well and I'm just not used to that so I do find that a bit of a struggle. Um, but actually, if I say it out loud, or at least, you know, really say it out loud in my head, then actually I do understand it. And I really feel like actually he's the kind of poet that I would love to see perform because I think he would be phenomenal and I would just like gel with it a lot more just in the written form because it's not the way I'm used to, I guess, reading words. I, I am struggling a little bit with it um, than I would do with any other poetry collection. But I am really, what I'm trying to do with my sort of reading for poetry this year is trying to go between like sort of contemporary poets and and, um, old poets um, and I don't mean old as an age he would still be a contemporary poet but obviously he has been producing poetry for like the, over the last three decades but really trying to change it up between sort of like the classical poets and contemporary I think so far I haven't really managed I've just been doing contemporary poets but I'll get there so a book I have started which is a reread for me is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz uh, I think I read this about five years ago, I would say now. I enjoyed it when I first read it, so I just wanted to um, revisit it and yeah, get more of the wisdom inside my head. So far I am on page 30 and like we've just started into one of the four agreements. The beginning was just a bit more of an intro that I really liked. And yeah, no, I actually really like this book. I I vibe with this kind of stuff so for me this is a this is a win. So another book that I'm currently reading and I'm actually reading slash listening to it because much like the issue I'm suffering with um Linton Cressy Johnson's poems is the sort of yeah vernacular or yeah the vernacular that this book is written in and that book is Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. So this is actually a buddy read and yeah we started off reading it um but <laughs> I was reading it and I was just like I I don't really understand what's happening here like I can read the words but then I'm not able to follow the story because I'm just like some of the words I don't know what this means and I'm just like not really sure what is happening here so luckily Scribd have it as an audiobook and I have been listening to it and reading it at the same time and let me tell you the person who is reading it good job an absolute excellent job because it's just very American like African-American speech and things like that and she good she really good and it's actually very interesting for me because when I hear her read some of the words and I'm looking at it I'm like thank god I'm listening to it because actually when you say it I know what that word is but reading it I wouldn't have been able to grasp like what it was I can't think of an example right now but maybe um when I'm reading it and I'm editing this I'll put an example up on the screen 
but so far I am enjoying it now that I'm following the story. It reminds me a little bit of the sellout, or rather the sellout reminds me of that, just in terms of like building a small town and things like that. That's not really what the sellout is about, but it gave me like those sort of parallel vibes. So in terms of what their eyes were watching gorgeous about, I'll just read to you the blurb um, from Goodreads. It says, fair and long-legged, independent and articulate, Janie Crawford sets out to be her own person. No mean feat for a black woman in the third for a black woman in the thirties. Janie's quest for identity takes her through three marriages and into a journey journey back to her roots um so really I am on the second marriage that she's um entered the first one was very short-lived and I guess again what the audiobook has really done for me is there is a sort of scene there's a chapter a whole sort of thing between her and her grandma and it's quite an emotional scene and I remember like reading this before I decided to listen to the audiobook and I couldn't grasp really what was happening. I could grasp the bigger picture, but actually what her grandma says and when the woman is reading out, I actually grasped how emotional and how like affected the grandma was by sort of what was going on. Um, and the scene between her and Janie was just very emotional. Um, very, I don't know, yeah, very emotional. I just what I'm gonna go with. And it's just not something I was able to grasp whilst I was reading it. So I'm enjoying that. I'm sort of, th this is a buddy read where we are reading sort of classics um and so far we have read treasure island and uh, the the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde um and yeah we just noted that we had read like obviously we were reading classics it's spanning across anything but obviously these were two um uk white male authors so we wanted to maybe just skip across the pond and go read an african-american classic so that's why we ended up on this i'm enjoying the change of like genre or just the type of book that i would actually um normally gravitate towards so it's an insight so onto books that i actually want to read or i'm thinking of picking up next the first one is dead man's body by agatha christie so this is so brand new for me because so far out of all the agatha christie books that i've read i think i've only read physically like one book which is the abc murders because i had the physical copy and that's what sort of started me on my journey the rest i've just listened to on audiobook because i really thoroughly enjoyed them i have seen all the itv adaptations now and they're read by hugh fraser the audiobooks the majority of them anyway and it's just a bit nostalgic and it feels like someone's reading you a bedtime story but got this in a charity shop and yeah i decided i would read it instead of listening to it i already know like obviously what happens in this book i think this is actually the last tv itv series book to the last itv adaptation to have aired um but it's not the last like if you're thinking of the books if you're thinking of the publication order in which the books were published um and that's how i'm reading them in order of publication rather than in order of like i don't know when people have pieced them together for how old like for how the natural story would have progressed and how old Burrow would be. So this was the last um, ITV adaptation to have aired. So I have fond memories of this and I actually really enjoyed that one. So I know what happened, but I'm really curious to read it. I'm so surprised by how short the books are, because obviously when you're listening to things in audiobook, it's just done in hours. But this is, this copy is 190 pages long and I just thought her stories were at least about 300 pages long, but apparently not. This contains a character that I really enjoy, which is Ariadne Oliver. I'll read you the back of it. It says, a fate at a country house in Devon and the well-known thriller writer Ariadne Oliver has organized a treasure hunt with a different, a murder hunt. But Mrs. Oliver feels unaccountably that all is not well. And she calls in that celebrated detective, M. Hercule Poirot, ostensibly to give away the prizes. And her fears are justified when the body is found. The corpse is very dead. So yeah, this is a very, this is like a mass paperback, mass market paperback edition by Pan Books. It's just so interesting as well, just to see how books looked at that time as well. Um, and they were published, when, when would this have been published? Do, 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 do. 1966. So yeah. First published 1956 actually, sorry, but second printing and third printing occurred in 1966. And this was written by her in 1956, or at least, yeah, when everything was finalized. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading that. And then a book that I found in Waterstones when me and my boyfriend were just browsing is You Have to Make Your Own Fun Around Your Own Fun Around Here by Frances Mackin. I had never heard of this book, like, never. <laughs> there were it was on the page where it was like buy one get one half price or something like that and there were so many books on there that I heard about but I had not heard about this and I looked in the back and I was like that sounds quite nice that sounds like something I would read so yeah I bought it. It says here Katie, Maeve and Evelyn have been friends for friends forever 
Outspoken, unpredictable and intoxicating, Evelyn is the undisputed leader of the trio. But Katie's dream of escaping their tiny rural town for a new life in Dublin confronts her with a choice. To hold on to a friendship that has made her who she is or risk leaving her, friend, her best friend behind. Told from Katie's witty, quirky perspective and filled with unforgettable characters, this moving, immersive and very funny study of sisterhood takes a keen-eyed look at the delights of complexities of female friendship, the corrosive power of jealousy and guilt and the people and places that shape us. Compellingly readable and effortlessly sharp, fizzing with the voices of rural Ireland, this is an unmissable novel from a dazzling new talent. Now, that's it, section of the lab. Sold me on it, not gonna lie. Female friendship, here for it. And you know, just the initial blurb as well. But what really got me was this was the perfect with shape. This was perfect with shades of Elena Ferranti. And y'all know I love that series, um, that quartet. So yeah, so I picked it up, and, and I love Island as well. So once I, it just had all these elements, that I was like, this, this is for me. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, there are a couple of like net galley books that I have requested that I'm also looking forward to reading, but I'm not going to put them on my immediate TBR. Realistically, it is these two books that you will see me like reading next. But yes, that is all for this video in terms of what I've been reading, what I'm currently reading, what I'm going to pick up next. Let me know if you have read any of these books. If you have, please let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're interested in reading any of these books and do let me know just what you're reading in general. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in another one. Bye!